All right, let's start the second section of this chapter. We're going to start talking about the dot product. Our goal is pretty simple. We've been talking about vectors. We talked about their lengths. Uh, what we would like to do now is to study their, uh, the angles between vectors, and we'd like to be doing it algebraically. We don't want to sketch it and measure it. That's always um, tough and then not very precise. So first thing I need to do is to define what the dot product is. So if I have two vectors, uh, vector v here, vector w, I'm still using v1 to vn for the coordinates of v and w1 to wn for the coordinates of w. They're both vectors in the same Rm. Then their dot product is v1 w1 plus v2 w2 all the way to vn wn. So I multiply the corresponding entries and add them all up. So for example, um, in 1.2.1, we're asked to evaluate this dot product. So I'm going to take the first components of both vectors, add them. I'm going to take the second ones and, add, and multiply them, sorry. And then the third one, multiply them. So I get 2 plus 0 minus 30. I get minus 28. This computation is super easy to make. It's not clear at this point that it's helpful at all. So let's keep going. Um, this proposition will tell us exactly why we care about them. If I have two vectors, both in R2 or both in R3, so not one from each, I'm sorry, the language is a bit off, um, the angle between them is theta, as in this picture, then v dot w will be the length of v, the length of w, time cosine theta. And so this number here, this dot product, that's very easy to get at algebraically, will get us to a point where we could find cosine theta, and so we could find theta, really. All right, we will prove this proposition a bit later once we have studied the properties of v dot w. All right, so, but let's use it now. I want to find the angle between these two vectors in R3. So let me compute all of the elements of this that we know. So um, let me compute the dot product. So v dot w, that's going to be uh, 1 times 2 plus 2 times 0 plus 0 times 1. That's going to give 2. Now I am going to compute the length of v and the length of w to be able to say what these two elements of this equation, um, what these two elements of this equation are. So the length of v is square root of 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 0 squared. And so I get square root of 5. Length of w is square root of um, 2 squared plus 0 squared plus 1 squared. That's root of 5 as well. All right, so we have all the algebra done, all those computations. Um, now let me rewrite this identity with those numbers in mind. So v dot w is length of v, length of w, cosine theta. Let's put it here. And so what we have is that 2 is root of 5, root of 5, cosine theta. And so that means that cosine theta is 2 over 5. And I can get a theta using our favorite function from Cal 1. Well, maybe not, but one function that we learned about from Cal 1, I can send the cosine to the other side. I get that our cos of 2 over 5 is theta. Now, this answer is exact, but if you notice, I'm asking for 
the angle to the nearest degree. So you have to plug this into your calculator. Since it says degree, you need to be in degrees and you should get something that rounds to 66 degrees. Please try to make sure that you know how to set up your calculator. So let's do this in general. Um, if we want to get the angle, we're going to have to apply our cos. Our cos of what? Well, from this, I get that cos theta is v dot w, length of v, length of w. So I need to send the cosine to the other side. So I'm getting our cos, and what's inside is the dot product on top and the two lengths underneath. All right, so that's the formula for an angle. And once we've proven proposition 1.2.1, we'll have that settled for R2 and R3.